Welcome to I Do What I Want with me, Hollis Joe McCollum. Hi, welcome. Um, um, this week we are we are talking about the character Aram. Aram. First, huh, I'm forgetting things. Let's talk about what this podcast is about. This is a, is a podcast about my writing journey and, and different things that into me as far as writing is concerned, and of course, the books that I myself write. Uh, last episode on July 10th, we talked about just what sort of things my writing journey personally through self publishing what I've learned so far. And frankly, I still have a lot still have a lot to learn. So in that, or, or, you know, or if you have any tips for me, tips for me, uh, give it a listen and shoot me an email. Let me know how you think how you feel and feel about it. Or if you think I don't and you feel you feel I should because I love to learn to learn. This time around, as you, uh, if you've been listening, you know I've been doing character studies from my book, To Save a World, which, which came out, it was published in July of 2017, and the sequel is going to be published early next year sometime, I'm hoping by March. We'll find out. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping by by February or March I will be able to say go buy this book. But the sequel, the Queen, the Queen Witch, is coming out. I'm doing a review review of the character that will become will be coming the main characters that I I hope you you love if you've already read the book or book or that you will love if you haven't read to to save a world yet it's available on Amazon on it's 4.8 stars on Goodreads 4.7 stars on Amazon and I'm pretty proud of it and people seem to like it so go check that out and then next year when the Queen Witch, which is the sequel, comes out, hop into that. And also, and also, speaking of books, I have another book. Another book coming out. Thing it all to do with with a particular world, uh, but a, a whole new fantasy world and and uh, series. Fully. Called called Spare the Soul. It is a Greco Roman Roman fantasy, and that is going to the publisher next month. <laughs> <laughs> in, in August, like in a few days. So yay. And hopefully it will be uh, published, ready to go and out for out for purchasing on Amazon and all the platforms by September. So that's very, very exciting. But let's jump into this guy, Aram. Uh, uh, also, before I really jump into it, into it, I do want to. This episode is going is going to include a few character spoilers. I'm really not going to give you plots. I'm not going to give you plot spoilers for the book to save a world. A world, but have not read it yet. There uh, will be some character spoilers about Aram. So because it plays very well. There are some th things that you find out about him in the course of the book, in the first half of the, the book, to be honest. I'm not going to reveal anything about the end of the book, but um, the, um, the first half of the book, you discover about him, about him as a person that um, um, kind of, you know, you, you learn it and could be considered a spoiler, spoiler about just character development. So and so if you if you don't want... Then maybe go go read to save a world first, and then come back and listen to this episode. But if you're you're okay with it, again, no spoilers, just 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 some character development spoilers. So, so if you're okay, with it, character development spoiler, please keep listening. So Aram is one of the four main characters. He is an elf by by birth. <laughs> you know, he's he's what I call a city elf. I believe I um, named his home city Amara. Maybe so, something like that. Uh, and he's 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 got he's physically speaking he like like I have said in previous podcasts uh, uh, because pretty much all the characters in in my book are elves. They don't have human main char characters. In my book. Um, they're they're taller than humans on average. So an average height for an elf male would would be between six foot to six three, and that is considered average height for a man, you know, for a male elf. And, and uh, elves are also like average, like average height, five, 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 eleven. And that is 
average height for an elf female. Uh, uh, Aram is on the side of of the elven spectrum. He's probably around around six six five, but he's by no means by elven standards considered freakishly tall. It's the same way you would view a, a six foot one or six two foot man in in our in estimation. So you know, kind of tall, but you don't really care. So so that's that's his height. He is. Um, He's very fit. He's a warrior. He's a swordsman. Uh, when we first meet him, he's a nomad. He is a he travels alone. He is nomadic. Very, very, very good fighter. Frankly, kind of a pretty boy. <laughs> uh, I uh, I actually imagine Aram. If you are familiar with the singer Enrique, Enrique Iglesias, is oh so oh, so handsome and pretty and. You know, just yeah, yeah. But that's how I imagine Aram to look in real life. Uh, his hair is a little more long and tousled, but he has dark, you know, beautiful kind of tanned, uh, golden tanned skin, big brown eyes with thick eyelashes, great smile, even feature features black hair that is that is thick and and wavy and all and has that slightly tousled look that probably looks perfect all the time he is a pretty boy boy um and we do not mind not mind <laughs> uh he's also he's also clean uh, again um as per elf rules that i made up for 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 the world of rashan um male el- elves really grow beards i mean in at best they can get a little bit of stubble but they really don't um you know, facial hair and, and things like that. They're they're not they're not hairy people. They don't really grow a lot of hair uh, on their bodies. So they're elves. I feel like that's pretty commonplace for most fantasy worlds who ha- that have elves. Most most elves are kind of kind of hairy and on the tall side, tall side and yada yada. So so they are a little they are a little and ears. Let's just be honest. But city elves are different from the tribal elves. elves mostly coley. Uh, tribal tribal elves tend to a little bit more. I I, I base the Irani tribe, which Darian and, and Ethne are from, on um, ancient Celts of of the, the British Isles. And so you would, would in, in tribal elves, you actually would see more um, like redheads, blondes, a few, a few more of those, you know, lighter yeah. eyes, that kind of thing. But in, in my, yeah. in my world of Rashan, the city elves, uh, they, I mean, not that you're not going to find your, your random light hair, or light eye, light eyed elf cities, but, but they, they don't do don't do tattooing uh, rituals that that the tribal elves do, and and they are generally much much more more uh, in in their 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 appearance. Tend to uh, you know maybe actually have a little bit little bit more of a a darker skin tone by by normal nature, dark hair, dark eyes. Uh, think of them honestly as a little bit maybe uh, maybe. Latin or or Persian kind of uh, general general appearance kind of, yeah a little bit more or more of a gold tone skin tone and tone and hair and dark eyes is the norm though you do see you know people with people with lighter hair and lighter eyes generally but it's just not not super common so that's what he looks and yeah so that's what he looks like he is and we're just going to get this right out of the way and this is the the, the spoiler um aram is a werewolf he is alone because he chooses to be for the safety of others he has learned to control the wolf when he you know he's again elves live for about 800 years so and Aram Ram is I ever state his age but age but we will say he's the dairy and he's he's about a, he's about a hundred years old and he was bitten prob- probably when he was ra- around 80 or 80 years old it would when he was around around 13 human years wise so he was he was bitten by a werewolf when he when he was just an adolescent poor kid right and um and then he had trouble and um and frankly when it came to light that he had been he had been infected uh his uh, his parents kicked him out of the house 
of the house was essentially just a 13 year old. <laughs> they they kicked him out, kicked him out and and said fend for yourself, yourself you are now a monster. And Aram has not seen not seen or spoke family since then. Um previous to that we can see, you know Aram actually in my feelings he had he had a very very normal family life for he has uh, we know brief briefly that he has a sister uh, who he actually uh, tried to tried to kill when he turned into a werewolf for the first time um, and that's you know, of course the parents like that he, he has yeah so he has a little sister he has a mom and a dad uh, I think I think I you know his dad they his dad they had a family business He's very normal relatively relatively happy hood and good re- and good relation family and until unfortunately he was bitten and his family couldn't deal deal and they they joned him kicked him out he has had zero contact with them since of course he had to learn how to control it aram has been by himself for about 50 years uh he he had to learn it now aram is pretty much by far the most physically and and probably a most strong, strong character in the book. Period. Period. Uh, he has been through a lot. Is, is he learned to control the wolf, wolf within himself? Which I mean, let's talk. Let's talk about uh, that. That is, it's just an unheard of. People don't do that. Werewolves have bad reputation for a reason because the beast with it takes over you become a monster yourself you know usually the wolf side wins so so to speak and the the person that was bitten gets taken over and they they you know everyone perceives them as evil so they take it in and they say okay i'm evil and aram never accepted that aram is the sort of that said no i don't know i don't accept it and spent 50 years years controlling it he he spent 50 years <laughs> learning to keep the keep the evil within himself down wolf is in there and he does you know he transforms every full moon and he can keep himself from hurting others when he is in the form but he does remove himself from from others so during during the book when whenever aram has to you know whenever the moon becomes full and he has to trans has to transform he just goes off off for a night i'm not going to be around anyone i care anyone i care of trust myself when i am in wolf form full stop so i remove myself self from you and when he's is and even with wolf farm he you know it's the beast is inside of him he has I don't really elaborate on it too much, but he has cravings. He has, you know, the, the mom is in him. He is, he is infected, so to speak. But his strength of character and his emotional fortitude keeps him from doing anything wrong. And he, every second of the day, chooses to be a Rom, the elf, and, and not, a, you, you know, monster ever chooses that every every second and he's always in control now oh that is is pretty important part of his character around in the book he is actually i mean he's a loner but even even before he was bitten you know i imagine he's an extremely inverted guy this is, this is his natural state of being just he's he's an introvert he's a very quiet person you have to approach him first. He first. He won't approach you. That's just who he is. Who he is. Is actually a positively a positive though. He's introverted, but he's really nice. He's really positive. He wants pe- people to succeed. And yeah, <laughs> he's great like that. Really, really great. He. Um, you know, he usually only speak, speaks when it matters, if that makes sense. Like, he doesn't talk. I'm I'm a talker, for example, but I am an extreme. Uh, me, as the author Hollis McCullough, I, I am very extroverted. I talk a lot. Sometimes I'll do it just to fill space. Aram, he, he doesn't do that. Again, he's a, he's an introvert. He will speak when he needs to. He's, to. he's not, you know, painfully shy, shy, like that. But he he will just... 
he doesn't he doesn't like to talk to talk unless unless something needs say, saying and he'll say it and and not that he you know he's he's very he's he has the, the casual conversation that happens all the time but he's more of a listener that sort of thing and he is a little unexpectedly funny in the book. In the book, I actually have him throw out a few deadpan jokes every once every once in a while. And, Wait a minute, did a did a did a rock? Did a rock? And it's and it's really I find, really I find it's really endearing. Other readers have told me they find it endearing about him. It's a part of it's a part of his true personality. He, you know, again, he 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 carries this darkness with him all the time. Time, but but he he's. He's genuinely, I, I think of him as an off-hearted person. He's, he's a very strong per- person, and people don't realize how sensitive he is, at, you know, emotionally, because he is very quiet and very strong, and he's got this weird, dark energy about him because he's a werewolf. <laughs> and so people don't think of him as kind of kind of mushy on the she on the inside but he is, he's actually a very kind very kind-hearted person he's concerned and he's he's he wants people to like him and and he 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 makes little jokes every again because he actually does he does have a pretty cute sense of her and, and and when they come out and it's it's fun and you laugh and it makes you know when he he gives you a rare smile because he, he he smiles more more as the story goes on, but Flea Ram just is not a not not a big smiler. <laughs> you would, wouldn't be if you if you were constantly trying to push back homicidal urges from a from it uh, from it. Uh, um, this 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 personality, the game or in the book, sorry, actually goes a, a little bit in contrast contrast with how originally played in the, in the game, which. I, uh, if you haven't heard my haven't heard my podcast, my first book to save a world is actually based on a uh, role playing game game. Or I say Dungeons Dragons, we didn't use use that system, but my friend and I played you know a, a, a fan role playing game, and I wrote down the adventure. <laughs> and Aram in the game, as we played him, was quite different. He was actually much more broody and negative in the game. Uh, a lot of that was. Just because, frankly, when you're playing a role-playing role-playing game, kind of fun to be be super be, as a play as a play a little fun to play it <laughs> that way, and um and he, and he was more cynical. He didn't make any jokes. Smiling never happened. He was still he was still a good one, but he was extremely serious uh, throughout the g- game. He really didn't poke fun right, or or anything like that. Now, th- this is actually a little bit in the book. Uh, as I, if you listen to my episode about Darian, and things about Darian was was just reversed from this. So Darian was more serious in the book than he was in the game. Uh, really, you know, tried you know tried and true military guy, and and then in, in the game, game actually played to be much more lighthearted not much more, but he he was still serious he was still a military, military man but he was he was, he was more more easy going and, and left and smiled more more um and aram in the game was much more serious and and then in the book he's he's still he's extremely introverted and he's he's serious because he's always pushing down the bad within himself, but he uh, he um yes his na- if he had na- if he had never been bitten by a he would he would be he would be like you know a joke more more of a jokester he he would be much more light light hearted that thing and that's his that's his natural natural way and I I feel like like because I made. Darian more serious in the book, which I feel actually worked better with the characters in the book and everything. I wanted to balance it a little bit because, you know, Aram doesn't need to be hard nosed. He's dark because because of his affliction, but he is doesn't mean he needs to be bro- to be broody all the time. He, he he needs to he needs to be super serious, which which he just that's just that's just not so it it actually created a lot of balance because Aram is he's got his own stuff going on, but but he is a little more more sweet 
<laughs> as silly as that sound, sounds to say, a werewolf is a little more sweet than, than uh, and as you read, it's, there, there are a couple of moments where you're like, oh, that's, you know, he's a nice guy, he's a good guy, and, uh, and, and people like that. So it's, it's interesting for me as the author to kind of see how that goes. And it really was, he was just sort of bal. It doesn't have, it doesn't have anything to do with like, because people, you know, you know, people uh, like jerks <laughs> when they read too. Not always, but you know, like those super hard, hard characters books, a lot of people like them, like them. And, and even though they're really hard nosed, nosed and serious all the time and never joke about anything. That that is a character that people can relate to as well. Every every you know every every personality has a real character in a book somewhere. But yeah, yeah, it was nice to balance out a Ram and give him um, a little bit more of a kinder edge in the book, and I really like how it worked out in the game. It was fun to play him as much more cynical, much more broody. Um, he was always the one in the game, the game saying, I don't going to work. In the book, he was the one saying, we're going to make it, make it work. He's an optimist in that book. And, and he is, he is, no, he is. He's like, nope, we're gonna, we're gonna live. Team don't die. We're going to live. We will make it work. Think in the positive. And, and also that plays into him dealing with the werewolf within himself because, uh, I, I personally am a big supporter, supporter of positive thinking. Uh, it's not, obviously not, honestly not, not, it will cure everything. It doesn't cure everything, but I do believe that a positive, positive outlook, that's a positive result. Salt. And and the more the more you say things like this will be okay or this this you know I am going to do is if you if you constantly focus on things in the positive then it, it, what it's a self fulfilling prophecy right so if you're constantly saying something isn't going to work I don't know if this is going to happen then that's also a self fulfilling prophecy and I I have found that in my life when I am negative about something happening and I doubt all the time, especially, you know, especially if it's frankly kind of out of my out of my hands tend to work out as well as well if I'm but if I'm positive, and I say no, I believe in it, I believe in myself, I believe in this, I, I think it's gonna work, I need to put the work in, and I just need to hustle and and get it done. And think to myself, it will be then most of the time, a because I'm thinking positively, I hustle more. And because I'm working harder, more gets done and I get what I want. It be positive. And that and that that is how in my personalist personal assessment, how it, probably a Ram probably a Ram every day. Every day he tells himself, I am a Ram. I am not I am not the wolf. I am I I will will keep it down. I this and so he, he apparently is a very positive person because that kind of thinking is what has kept him from becoming a monster. He didn't allow himself to spiral into the despair of like, everyone hates me, no one loves me. He just said, no, I will not hurt people. I will not do bad things. And that to me is just fr frankly pleasing. He is is he he's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. I gotta, I gotta say, I'm a big fan. Big fan of this character. I loved him more when I was when I was writing him. And I was playing him in him in the game, but 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 that's no. He's he's great. Uh, and also, side note, when I ask readers who their favorite character is, um, Aram is. Probably number one. Ethne is a very close number two. But people people love oh they relate most most strongly to I think it is because he has that he has that being an introvert who, who so sort of maybe needs people to reach out to him a little bit more and to start that conversation. But he's also also incredibly strong. He's incre incredibly deep. He is. He has a lot of troubles. He deals with them, 
in a positive way, and he's very strong about it. And and frankly, he doesn't burden others with, he will ask for help if he needs it, but he doesn't put his problems on other people. He's actually very, very, very well adjusted, well adjusted, <laughs> considering being disowned by the age of 13 or the age of 85, if we want to go by elf years, but, you know, as an adolescent being abandoned by his family, family I think he... He, he pulled himself up his bootstraps and just and just this kid and he made himself what he is today completely self-made man and, and i think that people really really respect it about him and i think that he gives people a lot of hope and that's probably why he when i he when i ask some favorite character is because there is because i'm always to know who who my readers find most relatable because that's always your favorite character, right? Is the one is the one you relate to the most. That's why I ask, ask, and Aram is number one. People, one. people always go, I relate to Aram. He, he's, yeah, he. Or well, they say I relate to him. But they say he's my, he's my favorite. He's just my favorite. He, he talks, looks the least. <laughs> he's, he's the one who, who I like the best. And uh, Ethne, if you're curious, is probably. The second one that I get, uh, Darian and Yoselin, not so much. Jeeve, I've gotten like one, one. Jeeve, but anyway, we won't talk about we won't talk about him. That's the episode. So, so let's talk a little bit about why we love Aram. Um, again, I, I well, and I've said about uh, why we love Aram, <laughs> but he's. Yeah, loners are highly relatable, especially in movies and in books, <laughs> in television. Let's just be honest. There are a lot of introverts out there. And of course, everyone reads, but introverts especially, I feel, books have a special place in an introvert's heart, introvert's heart and for a lot of reasons. And, and, and in that's, that's a big thing. He is. He's an extreme introvert. He's extreme. He really doesn't, you know. He does not want to lead. To lead, <laughs> he, not, he always there's always there's a Rian is usually the leader. He he he. Aram Aram just doesn't want it. He want that responsibility. That's not it's not who he is. He doesn't want it in front of crowds. None of that. Forget it. And I think another reason, of course, people love him is because he is so strong. He. He is okay, like it's it's tough to beat him. Not, I mean, definitely he is challenged in the book, and the enemies in the book, the book, good challenges, challenges, and they're very, very as well. Bram, if on in one on one combat with pretty much any much anyone, because they, he he's going going to win, even against Dan Starian. Dan is one heck of a fighter. Darian is an amazingly strong character as well, but Darian is just fully elven and he is at the top of his game for, for an elf. Aram, being a werewolf, has supernatural enhancements to his physical physical. He he has being a werewolf even when he's just in his regular elf form, his reflexes are faster. He's stronger than your in you know than than other and other elves just because he has beast inside of him. Him, he is sensible and hearing ring, and his five senses are elevated to an animalistic place. He he, you know that that coupled with the fact that he extremely extremely strong. Well, because you know what else are you going to do when you're alone all the time? He practices with his sword. He, you know, he does that kind of thing, lots of physical exercise, and he's he's incredibly strong. And he's you know very very accomplished fighter that's fast and and can smell you call you coming or coming so way than your average elf or human ever could, and. And on top of all, this, he's not d- dumb. He's a smart guy. I don't, I don't write, don't write him as really genius or anything. But he's intelligent. Uh, well, all my characters are intelligent because I, that's what I like to write. I like, yeah, I like people who are problem solvers and critical thinkers. So all four of the characters are, are pretty bright. You know, they're probably above average intelligence, all of them. And so he's smart. He's quick. He's strong. 
heightened, you know, elevated uh, abilities because he has a werewolf inside of him. And uh, yeah, Yeah. I mean, don't we love, but he's not so, so super powered that you beat him either. He either he's, he is not an insurmountable foe. He is a darn hard foe, but he is, he is is insurmountable, which as you will read if if you haven't looked yet or have read, he's, he definitely, when when put up against the other incredibly overpowered enemies, he he has char- he has a hard time. He gets knocked down. He gets up, but he gets knocked down. And that's something that we love that we love about him. And of course, thing that we love that I've harped on, that I've harped on. But he's a genuine optimist. Who optimist? Who rears? He does. He's quiet, but he he is an optimist. He really really cares, and. He's, that's just just sweet, and that you just like anybody who has that kind that kind of a party. It's nice. <laughs> and after saying all these wonderful positive things about Aram, it's it's actually as I always say, I, I, I in character study episodes, I also like to say why why we maybe don't like the characters quite as much, and that's probably harder with Aram because he um. Yeah, he he is so lovable, but frankly, frankly, the things that are negative about negative about him are because he's an introvert. Introvert. He um he tends to hang back sometimes when when he could he could be taking a little bit more more action. Now, in this never becomes a problem problem because you're, you know you have two more extroverted characters like Darian and Yoselin. Well, and Ethne, well, Ethne's more of an introvert, whatever. But you have three other main characters who are willing to step up and make decisions or talk to people. And he has the the luxury, extreme introvert, to just hang, to just hang back. Then when they come back with the come back with the gathered from strangers, then then he can just say, OK, I'll plan with plan with you now. So, so that is. It's it never becomes an issue in the issue in the book, but but honestly, in real life, and I'm sure as a, as a loner going forward, he probably he, he probably missed out on a lot of opportunities uh, uh, just because not willing to to put himself forward and put himself out there. Uh, and and the other thing that is, of course, the biggest negative about him is that he's a freaking werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> he's a werewolf and yes he has he has gone on to control control him and and this person who learned to not allow, allow the wolf to take over and not and just be be just be calm and be who he was he was that monster lives inside of him like i said every second of the day he gets he he's pushing it down he's pushing it down and that's you know for 50 years he's been pushing and he's going to continue elves live for 800 800 years he's seven 700 more of pushing the wolf pushing the wolf down every second of every day and that's that is just his his normal but it's it's normal it's it's varying aram uh, lives with the constant fear of slipping up, quite fr- frankly, and that is something that is, that is terrifying to him, terrifying to anyone. But it, the, those who, who care about him, his friends, they they accept they accept the um, the possibility that they could be in a really, 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 really bad situation situation if a Rob ever roll. But that's something that thing that choose to be around. Uh, they are aware <laughs> of who he is, or of what he is, and uh, or of what and, what and who he is, and that. So they 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 say, oh, you know, we're we're going to trust you to continue to fight that good fight. And but but it's still there. It's every day, and he has um, an energy about him. And like I said, the animalistic thing where he has the senses and the speed and all of that. Well, that that goes that goes both ways. In um in um in the book, I met a couple times, I think as I think as well uh, that that animals 
do not like Aram. <laughs> like they sense a predator. Predator when he is like riding horses. Horses that like he 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 has to put to put forth extrovert sometimes sometimes animals just not want to be around him which is fair because he's a werewolf and instinctually every ounce of that that horse is saying get me away from this predator and and that's again very fair <laughs> so so he has trouble with that and it is something that on an like primal level of other people w- would sense as well as well you you know, we all, you know, we all, you know, we all have our modern world, and we sort of don't live on our instincts any, any much, so much anymore. Instinct still kicks in, kicks in when when a dangerous person looks into a room. You can sense something is wrong. You can sense something is off. You you could see you you know you'll see a total stranger, and you'll think, okay, I need to be very careful of this person, even though you, you might know nothing about them, but, but, but certain like that, that dark cloud, cloud that never, ever leave him, him, it puts off a vibe and that vibe is dangerous predator, predator. And, and he can't help that, that again, that's not who Aram is. That's not who the elf is, but it's a werewolf in there. And, that energy is put out, out every day and he walks around and people people are just sort of instinctually wary of him and and he doesn't hold it against them he knows their right to be so that's why he chose to be a nomad living living alone for all that time and time. and he continued that way, if he hadn't run into the other characters in the book, and then, you know, they all kind of went to the quest together. But Aram, when you meet him, it was never his intention. You know, he was never his intention to join a quest, never his, he, he always just sort of remained alone. He perfectly, he was perfectly accepting of the existence of just spending his entire his entire life alone. when uh, when you for uh, when you for, that's that's who he is that's that's he was he was perfectly accepting of it because that would in his in his mind that's what kept safe are part of it and i'm very happy that that he made friends <laughs> and that he didn't have to, to as the writer of this fictional character i'm i'm glad that he didn't have to but that that that's basically a rom in a nutshell and um yeah he uh <laughs> he's pretty great i think i think that it is one of I when I was first writing the book, he wasn't somebody that somebody that I truly thought would be so rela- relatable. But I was really happy that in the end he is that he is who is and he is so weird and uh, and, and multifaceted and and that he and that I, I'm I'm just excited that he is so related is so really not expect it it wasn't until my wasn't until started telling me how much they loved aram that that i realized who i had created so thanks oh thanks readers i appreciate you letting me know because i know because i honestly and, and many writers will tell you this <laughs> that we don't know what we're doing half the time <laughs> we're just writing things down it's like the char- characters kind of run off like feral children in the night and and things just come come into being that flow out of the pen and you don't even realize it and the way that Aram's character developed uh I can honestly say it really wasn't in- intentional I, I mean of course the werewolf the werewolf side and the then that was all in- that was all in- the uh making him sweet and 
and uh, and so and optimistic and a little funny was was not something I something I, I land on. It was just something I. It just came out of there. I, I, I just sort of had him make a, a dead pan joke here or there. It was a surprise and it was a, it was a fun conversational character development situation among all of them. And when they realized he had actually made a joke and a funny one too, and, 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 and then he was happy because of that. And that was, it was a fun scene to write. And then we just sort of went, just sort of went from there, from there. But that much it that's it. that's that um tell me tell me what you think and hey if you've read the book and your favorite character character is a rom shoot shoot me a message message on my website holomccullum author dot com that is you can you can email me via my website you can dm me on instagram at hollis joe mccullum uh you can message me on facebook uh i do get my facebook messenger situations but i i will i mean as i've as i've said previously i don't really check they check facebook i auto populate the post populate the post instagram account uh but yeah so so if you're commenting facebook posts as on my page i appreciate it and thank you and thank you for that but honestly i i am i i don't i don't look at it (laughs) I have I have a lot going on. I I can kind of just fo- focus on one's media, so I focus on Instagram. But yes, let me know about it, or or frankly, if you just have questions for me, if you if you as a reader want to know more about Ram than what I have said, um, if you have a specific question about the character or or, or about the book, yeah, I'm here. Um, that's about it. About it. World is available on Amazon and BarnesandNoble.com. It's on the Ingram, Ingram list. So honestly, you can go any bookstore on the net and order it from the bookstore. You know, they, they probably don't have it sitting there on the shelf, but you can order it from anywhere because when books are on the Ingram list, they that's where they're accessible. So you can grab the ISBN number from from the Amazon listing and just go to your local bookshop, local bookshop and say, can you please for me? And they'll, 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 they'll they can do it for you. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Check out my reviews. I'm very confident. Like I said, it's got, it's got 4.7 stars on right now and 4.4.8 stars on goods and the se- the sequeling out next year. So, so get it read before, before the sequel comes out. So you can see what happens next in all these people's lo- lives. The next character study study I'm doing is going to be on the character Yoselin. Uh and I'm doing this in order that you meet the uh, in the order that you meet the characters. So so there's that. Uh that won't be the next episode. I tried to buffer things a little bit. So, so um, I don't know what I'm gonna know what I'm gonna do for the very next episode. <laughs> I'm gonna figure I'm gonna figure that out. The next episode I'm going to have out on August 7th. That's my promise to you. I'm putting it in my calendar. So thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, You can listen. Obviously, you are listening. But uh, you can listen on my YouTube channel, Hollow McCullum, comma author. You can listen uh, on Spreaker, and you can, and you can listen on Spotify. The name of the po- the name of the podcast is What? Please tell your friend. Tell your friend. And like I've said so many times, oh, and I, I usually post it to Facebook as well. But again, but again, I I am posting from my little my little Spreaker deck here, and and not really checking things so much. <laughs> but... <laughs> That's about it. Thank you so, so, so much for coming and listening. And thanks. Bye.